and hello everybody this is Super Metroid Fan here today and uh, well I would like to welcome you to my next walkthrough which um, if my remote will work here hang on uh, just gotta be a little bit away trying to aim it there we go so uh, yes welcome everybody this is the next walkthrough and uh, well if the title didn't already give away it's a Nintendo game by Retro Studios on the GameCube. I let the hype be real. For literally, I if I remember correctly, this was one of the first games in the series to introduce me to it. And honestly, this is one that is good to be introduced to. Metroid Prime. So, yes. I am here and I am back with this series again. And this time it's going to be just me, no co-op, no switching off, no having to, you know, in the middle of gameplay question things, just right back to the good old fashioned single player Metroid. So this setup's a little different, uh, for one you may be hearing the difference in the microphone if I've had it wrong the whole time, because I've had this blue snowball from Dennis, and I just haven't apparently been using it at all in any of my recordings for the past three months. So there's that. Alright, so anyway, uh, as you can see, this is my personal save. Uh, I'm not going to delete it. Nah, who am I kidding? I really should, to be honest. But it doesn't really matter, because whatever. So I've beaten the game, as that was an indication. And also, I have a copy of Metroid Fusion, but it's got that classic issue where no save data can be saved if you turn the console off. So. If I wanted to, I could go through NES Metroid, and that's how I was playing it before, if I even uploaded that, I don't remember. Uh, and the Metroid Fusion Zoo is just a connection bonus, purely for aesthetic value. Uh, I'm going to turn it on during these first couple episodes, but I would wind up forgetting about it later. So, just kind of here for now. Um, and uh, It will be on during the next later few episodes, but for this first episode, I'm leaving it on. And because there is really um, no vocals in terms of talking... I get to talk the whole time. I unlike DMC where I had to depend on remembering where a cutscene would be. I just simply uh, enjoy with you guys this time. So um, I'm looking at the audio waves here. It looks a little different from the blue snowball. I mean, everything seems quieter and more contained a little bit. But also, there's like weird squiggle bits. So I'll figure out about that. But uh, I'm going to wind up recording this about three times to get three takes that will go good. Alright, so for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Metroid timeline, with the inclusion of Other M, Nintendo made it so that it couldn't have gone from Super Metroid to the whole series of Fusion, not Fusion, on um, Prime, right into Fusion. Now it's considered uh, between Metroid 2 and... no, no, between 3 and 3. It was... Was it after Other M? I can't remember either. Other M is put between the last part of the Prime series and before Fusion, or it, it goes like right after Other M into Prime. And in either case, it would make sense, but who knows? I can't remember off the top of my head. So it's kind of funny to me that I'm coming back to Metroid on a game that came back to Metroid, because after Super Metroid was released, for years, including a whole generation on the N64, no Metroid game was released by Nintendo. This was the first game released in at least five years. And honestly, it's it was worth the wait if you were a player of Metroid at the time of its release. I didn't get to experience part of that hype, but I still love the game. So Samus looks a little weird due to the fact that I have turned the fusion suit on. I'm going to do a recording of it with the fusion suit and without the fusion suit, and I'll see which one looks better. Um, I don't really think the fusion suit's like that bad, but at the same time, I don't think it's that good. Um, honestly, like if it's a multiple playthrough, then I'd say yes. So the game pretty much will describe itself. Nothing hard here. Uh, it's got very interesting controls, which is a one-stick three-dimensional camera. For those of you at home that are curious. The C-Stick does nothing, unlike in other shooters where people would believe that it would, um, where it would be kind of like uh, moving the camera and then the main stick would be moving the player. It's a little different here, where you have to rely entirely on one stick for your motion, and then the other stick is purely to swap your weapons, which it seems weird, but it's actually a very intuitive and feels natural once you get used to it. Uh, so if you couldn't see, 
Um, on the left, that's my D-pad. The D-pad will switch between my visors. Samus has multiple visors. For now, she only has her combat and her scanning visor. The scanning visor will tell us information about where to go, or about certain objects, or in this case, interact with the environment. Oh wait, I scanned the wrong thing, didn't I? Whoopsie! Oh god, that voice crack. Oh yeah, it was here that I needed to do it. Whoopsie! Alright, that's better. Um, in the top right, you can see a mini-map. And beneath that, you can see my missile count. Because what? who wouldn't be a badass with a freaking arm-mounted missile launcher? And... Oh, you're in the vent, that's right. Uh, so, in the top left, there is also a little mini-map. If you can't see. And that mini-map is telling me where things that are known as creatures are. Uh, the creatures are your enemies. Like, everything. That's an enemy is a creature. So, after you get a little description here, you can press start... Well, okay. Not in this version of Metroid. It's only in 2 and 3. I'm sorry, I forgot to warm up on this. So, uh, by pressing start, we go here to our inventory. We can check out our suits, our visors, our morph ball, our arm cannon, our secondary items, and our logbook. This will keep information that we don't need to remember, including the entries of creatures. Um, and on this, there's going to be an important note. When people play this game, they shoot for a couple different things. They shoot for a speed run, they shoot for 100%, and then they shoot for any percent. I've never 100% in a Metroid game in my life. True fact. Not, not a single Metroid game has been completed to that degree. And uh, I, I honestly think it's probably a good idea if I start here, because at least in this one, if I frig up, I can always go back. So the game's telling me about my charge beam, which is just you hold your fire button and release, and does more damage. Uh, specifically in Metroid Prime 2, you can see in multiplayer it does, on the standard beam, a single shot does 1, and the charge beam does 10. Uh, but, back to what I was saying. So, I haven't actually 100% in this game because... To 100% the 3D Metroids, you have to not only accomplish getting all the items in the game, which is... The line of energy that we have, I believe it is 12 energy tanks, uh, 255 missiles, and a numerous amount of power bombs. That's the one number that I can never remember. And I, I've gotten the missile part. Uh, and also in this game, there's a couple combos for your charged beams and missiles, which we'll find out about that way later. Um, if you don't get those combos, that counts towards your percentage of completion, and I don't even know where one of them is located. So I'm going to have to find all of this information out, which isn't that hard because so many people have 100% in speedrun this game. Uh, take into consideration, I am most definitely not a speedrunner. I would like to someday be able to shoot for getting close to the Super Metroid World Record speedrun for any percent, but that's, that's years away. Um, I would like to go back to the UI for a moment here. So, when I was in Morph Ball, in the top right corner, there were those three little hexagonal shapes. Those are my bombs. You can only drop three at a time. It's in every single Metroid game. Pick it up. Uh, there, in some games, you can charge your beam and then switch into Morph Ball and you'll drop more. Uh, I was kind of hoping to take no damage until we hit the boss. Um. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, in the top, where it says energy, that's my energy. The line represents how far out of the current energy tank I'm on will get depleted. Oh yeah, I have to scan you, because you're actually an enemy. Go. Uh, those space pirates that I was shooting before, because that's what the enemies are, uh, those do not count towards the creatures, because they're so damaged. Samus doesn't give a crap about getting their IDs down, for some reason. Uh, back to the energy. The bar just shows, like, kind of nothing, actually, this one, if I remember correctly. Oh no, it does actually show for damage out of the full thing. And, uh, just for the sake. Actually, no, I'm, since I'm not being very much into it, we'll just take a peek. So, you can scan almost anything in this game that has that symbol come over it. And uh, I kind of like in the other games how you're just kind of, you can see everything that needs to be scanned, but the problem in Prime 1 is how you have to scan things. As you can clearly see, there is just this box with scanning objects. Everything else has no information on scan, and it's kind of annoying, but you, you get used to it, you know how to deal with it. Especially when you know where you're going. 
Uh, I would be into, you know, setting the atmosphere, but it would take a very long time, and I do not want this video to be terribly long, but it is going to be terribly rambly. That's kind of the offset. And yes, you don't have to use missiles on certain enemies, like I'm showing here. You can just kind of free fire them. And you have a lot of health. I probably should have scanned you, but oh well. Yeah, I'll just give you guys an example of why I'm not scanning them. Hey, buddy. See, it's it's telling me it's a space part, but it's not giving me the thing. I, hate it. I was playing Metro Prime 3 a little bit ago. That was a waste of a missile. Um, what was I on before that? Oh yeah. So to 100% this game, uh, after you get all those items that I talked about a while back, and I forgot to come back to, uh, you also have to collect 100% scanning data. Incredibly difficult, in my opinion, because. If you kill a boss without scanning it, game. That's it. Just, you're done. Everything else is doable. But missing out on those boss scans and those one-time encounter scans is what screws you out of it. And there's a couple enemies that you can do this to in the game. Specifically, like I said, every single boss. Uh, the parasites in here, those are missable. I swear, one of these guys actually didn't get scanned, though, before. Uh, and that's why you have to make sure you get all these scans, because I had a almost completed thing, but I missed the boss of this area, and I miss um, I missed a boss's minion that is unscannable again. So, I was kind of sad about that, because it would have been awesome to have 100% scan data in this game, because that's an achievement of itself. Also, something weird about this game. Sometimes the scan zones are not proper. Probably just to prevent you know, people from speed running or whatever. Uh, so... I got an easy genius. Just give me this stuff already. Um, so, at some points I'm going to go for atmosphere. At some points I'm going to go for, you know, straight out to the fact. And yada yada yada. I'm going to ramble a ton in this series. Because that's what I do when I play Metroid. So... Okay, so I'm going to aim for 100% scan and 100% item completion, which that is the true 100%. I don't care about my time, etc. Now, when we save in this game, unlike in a few Metro games, it's not just saving your data, it will fully heal you. Uh, if I was speedrunning, I would have dodged this completely. Like, literally. I just, I wouldn't have even bothered because saving is just going to eat away at your time. So, speedrunners never save. Which means when they die, they're fucked. Imagine if somebody actually did get the world record and save the game at least one point. That would be pretty cool. And I accidentally triggered this boss. Alright. Well, I'll stay a little quiet for this. Because it's cool. And welcome to the very first boss of the game, and they sh throw it to you this quickly. Yes, I am not joking. This is the Parasite Queen, as the game now tells us. Uh, so space pirates discovered something on this planet, and they started to mess with it. And they made these parasites, and they were trying to replicate Metroids. How this thing is similar to a Metroid Queen, I will never understand. But it's pretty nasty. Granted, this one's kind of damaged, but it's still not... Terrible. Uh, so this boss fight's pretty simple. Uh, at some points, the boss will shoot its vi the vial, you know, vial at you. Uh, and also these little blue shields actually do protect you from the don't for reason A or B. And sometimes she'll look like she's gonna kill you, but in reality, no, she's just kinda mad that you're in her zone, in her face. Uh, and whenever it's like this, don't don't even think you can get a shot in. And damn it, I actually got Side swiped by that body shit. It's not that hard to dodge, I'm just not being very good at it. Yeah, you're supposed to wait to dodge until she uh, she chucks her head forward. Uh, and then of course, cause she's stupid, she was standing over the reactor, so introductory or enditory to most Metroid games, we're gonna go run away from explosions now. Literally, this happens in Metroid 3, this game, and 
one other method game. Can't remember though. Alright, so really, like, this isn't even that hard. They give you seven minutes to escape. It's it's really easy. I mean, in all Metroid games, there is this one point, and I can, of course, sit here infinitely, because lol. Um, there's always the one point where you're doing the explosions. It's either the beginning or your end, and there's only like a couple games to do the beginning. Oh, hey, this is a way to make it easy on my missile count. Thank you. Just disable that turret. Yeah. And then we come back here, they're fighting another Parasite Queen that didn't get to live. There are enemies everywhere, but who gives a crap? Except, like, the ones that are actually walking. Wait, can I scan you? No, no, no. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to kill it, because it doesn't want to freaking work. Uh, the best strategy in this game, by the way, to avoid enemy incoming fire. Just kind of circle straight. Make this nothing to it. Uh, and you'll hear me rapidly tapping a lot, at least with the power beam, because sometimes, you know, the single shots are better because, uh, it may seem like more, less damage, or more, but it's kind of the opposite in some places. And, oh, hey, yeah, you're a new enemy, I should probably skip that. Oh, wait, no, you're just, you're a new enemy. So, if you were paying attention, there was only a couple cases where you could have scanned the, uh, fully-fledged parasite. And I mean, like, five circumstances. So if I didn't get it, like I did already, I'd be screwed. And, uh, okay, I just want to make sure that I wasn't in one area. Um, 100% scan data is harder than 100% items, because in this game you can go back and fix your items if you fuck up. So, 100% scans is not my focus, 100% items is, and again, this is going to be my first time doing so, so if I fuck it up, I'll have to go back and post and uh, get the item, which isn't all that hard. It's just very time consuming, which is why I say it'll be a post. Head away for the explosion. <sighs> so yeah, in typical fashion, we're just kinda getting away from the explosion. I don't care what you guys, you guys are shit. You know what I think would be kind of funny? If you ever were, like, a secretary, and you just had to constantly carry, like, a, a gun. Because if you didn't have a gun, you couldn't shoot these doors to, like, talk to your boss or whatever. So I'm, I'm just curious if, like, a paralyzer, Samus' sidearm whenever she de-suits, is, like, given to everybody in the, um, Galactic Federation? Just because... Why do doors have energy shields? I mean, can you touch the door and make an energy shield? Because if that's the case, Samus can't do that. For whatever reason. Uh, also, if I remember, this thing can kill you, but... Uh, this, you suck. Like, no hiding it. That's a crazy thing to dodge. Back to what I was saying. Yeah, how... how why do they do that? I, I always wondered that. Like, in some areas of the game, it makes sense. Like, in here? Maybe. Just maybe. So, uh, something that I should remark is that since technically Ridley has died and come back to life like how many times at this point in the series, um, Samus didn't have her post traumatic stress disorder kick in there. And she knew Ridley was dead. Other M, you kind of fucked up by trying to emphasize how much people need to read the Metroid mangas there. And, uh, well, we tried running from explosions. Didn't work out too good! We still got caught up in this one. Uh, this doesn't make much sense, what you're seeing, but if I had the regular suit on, which I should have had on because I'm stupid, um, her shoulder pads for her various suit just fall off. So now we've got problems. The explosion hit us so hard, it knocked our systems off. So the grapple beam that I just used a second ago is gone, uh, my missile launcher is gone, my missile capacity is gone, as a side note, my morph ball functionality is gone, my charging beam is gone, Many of my freaking necessary functions are gone. Meaning Samus just lost most of her power-ups because she stared at an explosion. The one thing cool guys don't do. 
But it doesn't matter because we have more than enough time to escape the explosion. And save us another day. Oh no, the powerful chosen water effects are gone. How will I recover them? I don't know. You know what? I have no powers. I'm gonna go fight this giant purple space dragon on that planet. Because he's surviving. Let's go on face ship with very strange projectile systems to propel yourself forward. Look out for the rebel. Rebel, rebel. My bad. To this mysterious planet. So, um, about the difference from cutscenes to this game from uh, DMC3, uh, I don't remember where most of the cutscenes are in this game. I remember what they are, but I don't remember what triggers them. And because of that, I'm sorry to say, but you're going to have to put up with the little tiny bit of background noise that occurs when I'm not talking, uh, because there's not enough time for me to do my usual audio trick that allows me to see, so to say, in post where a cutscene begins and where it ends. So for that reason, I'm sorry to say it, but you have to put up with it. And that's not going to matter too much because again, there's not very many cutscenes, but at the same time, I think that you'll be able to hear this game fine. So another difference between this game and DMC3 is that when I end an episode, like I am right now, I'm going to simply just have a moment when I am done talking where, if I remember, there should be annotations or an end card telling you where to go. This is experimental and this is new to me because I don't know how to do this. I want to try to do something good for this walkthrough though because I love this game. I love all the Metroid games. More than I love Devil May Cry. And Devil May Cry, I love a fucking lot because it's so much fun to hack and slash. But this game is different. This game has atmosphere. And I'm going to try my best to try and let you sample it when I can. When Nintendo won't slap me with the copyright for doing it, because as much as we love Nintendo, Nintendo doesn't love gamers so much. Uh, also, if you're curious, the target the, um, video length for these episodes is 20 minutes, not 15 or 30. Uh, the end, This part of the end of a walkthrough is a little different, but it's just so I can inform everyone what's going to happen as a difference. And the music is picking up at just the right moments. Alright, so... Thank you all for watching. I have been Super Metroid Fan. This has been Metroid Prime on the GameCube, not the Wii version of this beautiful and amazing game. Uh, and I thank you all for watching. If you'd like to watch more, please uh, go ahead and subscribe to me so that way that when the next video goes out, you can get it right to your YouTube inbox. Or better yet, go check out the channel and see the previous walkthroughs that I'm talking about. Uh, in both cases, please, if you enjoyed, leave a like. If you did not enjoy, leave a dislike. I love to hear people's feedback. And on that note, I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. Ciao!